Happy Christmas to you and to your family. You're listening to this on Christmas Day 2021. I'd like to share with you from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, which reads, In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom God favours. I love the Advent story and the nativity because it captures and encapsulates the full range of human experience and emotion, fear and hope, life and death, tragedy and triumph, powerlessness as well as tremendous potential. The songwriters tell us that this is the most wonderful time of the year. Some would even say magical on every street, on every high street and every side road. There are colourful lights blinking, shining and undulating through the night. In supermarkets and shopping areas over the last few days and weeks, you've heard songs blasted through personal address systems. On television, the programming is replete with Christmas films, Christmas decorations, Christmas cooking. If you came from Mars, everything in Western culture would tell you that this is a magical time of the year. It's all artificial, of course. In fact, it's as artificial as the Christmas tree in our lounge. The lights, the decorations, the feasting, the giving and exchanging of gifts can all be traced back to many thousands of years to the winter solstice celebrations of all kinds of pagan belief systems in which people would celebrate the longest night of the year. In addition to that, this time is really conflicted. The bright lights, the tinsel, the baubles, the jingle jangle music, the endless shopping and consumerism The expectation of joyfulness is often contrasted with the reality of broken relationships, depression, seasonal affective disorder, isolation. And again, there is a flight from reality. And we see these things in the nativity story in the synoptic gospels in the New Testament. Because Mary, she's about 13 to 15 years old. Joseph is older, about 30 years old. They're betrothed to be married in a small community And Mary, quote unquote, finds herself pregnant. I want to tell you that the nativity is about hope breaking through fear and despair. It is about joy growing through and indeed overwhelming sadness and loss. The real Christmas was nothing like the calm nativity scenes we see depicted in churches and on Christmas cards. It was fraught with danger and terror. It begins with Mary engaged to Joseph and at first she she finds herself pregnant as I've said and at first she claims that uh, uh, she's pregnant by an angel and her claims are met with incredulity and disbelief. Joseph maintains his marriage to her because he's warned by an angel not to divorce her so he stays with her, her out of a sense of obligation. Far far away in Rome the center of the world at this time. The Emperor Augustus has decided to conduct a census and a major tax of the Roman Empire. All peoples everywhere are commanded to their country and region of their birth to be counted and taxed. And so a heavily pregnant Mary makes this arduous journey. She ends up having to give birth to her first child en route. Childbirth at any time is dangerous. But having a baby on the road, without the care of the village midwife, without your mother and aunts supporting you through the birthing process, is not only dangerous, it must have been traumatic. It's interesting that Luke's account doesn't include the story of the Magi. There is no reference implied to the challenge um, of the throne of Herod. In other words, that class of people seem to be excluded from Luke's narrative. What we see 
is Jesus appearing to shepherds. Shepherds, even though they're valued, they were valuable to the economy, they were despised because their work was dirty. The nature of shepherding meant that shepherds had to, could not keep the Sabbath because they had to look after the sheep 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They were therefore outcasts, people on the edges of society, liminal people. Yet it is to these shepherds that God sends the messenger. The nature of the message is both subversive and revolutionary. Listen again. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born in this day of David a saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among those whom God favours. The words of the message are loaded with politically explosive material. The term good news is normally reserved for high-level imperial announcements. And the use of the word saviour is a trigger word because it's not just a spiritual language, but would have been understood to have a political dimension and a social dimension. The use of the word messiah in the, in the message seals the deal because messiahs were understood to be divinely appointed political and military leaders. Everything about the message is dangerously subversive. For example, to illustrate the point, there's the famous Prean calendar, an inscription in stone delivered in, um, recovered rather, at a place called Perean, a Greek city on the western side of Turkey. And the inscription reads, and I'll read it very quickly, whereas providence which has guided our whole existence, which has shown such care and liberality, has brought our life to the peak of perfection in giving to us Augustus Caesar, whom providence has filled with virtue for the welfare of humankind, and who, being sent to us and to our descendants as a saviour, has put an end to war. And has set all things in order, whereas having become visible, Caesar has fulfilled the hopes of earlier times, not only in surpassing all the benefactors who preceded him, but also leaving to his successors no hope of surpassing him. Whereas finally, that the birth of the God, Augustus, has been for the whole world the beginning of the gospel, the good news concerning him. Therefore, let all be reckoned a new era beginning from the date of his birth and let his birthday mark the beginning of a new year. The inscription to the great and the good of Perean regarding what was called the Peace of Rome or the Pax Romana was giving to mesmerise people in believing that Roman domination was good for them. Luke countermands this false story by speaking an alternative truth. But the angel said, do not be afraid, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people, not just the great and the good, not just those at the top, but for all people. To you born on this day in the city of David, a saviour who is the Messiah. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among men. The passage in Luke chapter 1 and also Luke chapter 2 are both infused with joy. In Luke 1, Mary rejoices in God, her saviour. In Luke 2, the divine messengers bring good news of great joy, literally mega joy. In Mary's chapter, in, Rome, in Luke chapter 1, Mary's spirit jumps up and down in exaltation and exhilaration. In Luke chapter 2, the, the shepherds receive this story, this message of mega joy. For Jesus and for us, sorry, for us, Jesus is joy to the world because the reality of Jesus is the guarantee that God will fulfill God's promise to each and every one of us. The fact that there was someone called Jesus born in a place called Bethlehem who grew up on the wrong side of the tracks in the ghettos of Nazareth, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, an act that should have obliterated him from history. Um, yet within a few short months of his birth, there are people who are carrying in fear, now boldly proclaiming that Jesus was and is alive. The fact that our world has been irrever irrevocably changed by the person of Jesus is a reason for celebrating and great joy. And so when I think of the future, I'm not afraid. Even in the midst of this global pandemic, even though the thought of my death 
does not strike terror in my heart because Jesus lives. I too am alive and will live forever with Jesus. This is a season of joy because as we come to the end of 2021 and we stand on the threshold of 2022, I'm excited about the future. So this Christmas, I want to share with you some words that a friend shared with me. This Christmas, end a quarrel. Seek out a forgotten friend. Dismiss a suspicion. Write a love letter. Share some treasure. Give a soft answer. Keep a promise. Find the time. Forgo or forget a grudge. Forgive an enemy. Listen. Apologize if you were wrong. Try to understand. Examine your demands on others. Think of someone else. Be kind. Be gentle. Appreciate. Laugh a little. Laugh a little more. Express gratitude. Gladden the heart of a child. Welcome a stranger. Take pleasure in the beauty and the wonder of earth. Speak your love. Speak it again. Speak it yet again. Once again. God bless you and happy Christmas.